On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we are talking through my top four choices for technology companies poised to step into the consumer and prosumer drone market in the event that DJI is actually banned from the American drone industry. Let's not waste any more time. Let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots now worldwide. Make sure you get subscribed to their YouTube channel. Just search The Droning Company and you will find it. Tons of great drone content there, including some made by yours truly. Get subscribed to their YouTube channel and check out their website, thedroningcompany.com. The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. So full disclosure, today's video is not going to be super compelling imagery wise it is very much a talking headpiece so might be a good one for you to multitask on just minimize this and still listen to what i had to say but continue doing what you need to be doing uh during your work day today so fair warning just wanted to get that out there so look, here's the thing. DJI is not gone yet. There's still a few things that need to happen for DJI to be banned in the United States. And there's been some speculation about what drones this will affect should this legislation to ban DJI is passed. I'm here to relieve some stress that you might be feeling. It's still not a great situation, but the legislation that is passing its way through the House, Senate, and eventually it'll get to the Oval Office that only applies to future DJI technology. So if you have a DJI drone, it's not going to brick your DJI drone. That's how it stands right now. That does not mean it couldn't change to be retroactive and affect your drone. But as it stands right now, if the legislation that is in place passes, it will only affect future DJI drones. So think Mavic 4, think Mini 5, think Inspire 4. Those are the drones that it's going to impact. And even though I am firmly against banning DJI in the American drone market, I do think it's important as an industry that we consider all angles if we do come to a DJI-less America scenario. Now, the fact is we do have some American and America-friendly countries that are producing larger commercial enterprise drones that I don't want to say we'll fill the void entirely, but they do have some capabilities for those applications. But for the consumer and prosumer market, guys like me, guys like you probably, there's just no solution out there to fill the void that will be left by the DJI Minis, by the DJI Mavic 3s, by the Inspire series even. There's just nothing out there that quite fits the bill. That's why I started to do some research on potential technology companies that could fill the void in the event that we do come to a scenario where we do not have DJI available to us in the American drone market. I found four companies that I think are poised to do it. Let's talk about them. Number one on our list is GoPro. Now, if you've been in the industry for like six or seven years, you probably remember when GoPro had a drone available for the consumer and prosumer market, the GoPro Karma. If you haven't been in the industry that long, or if maybe you were under a rock at that time, let me tell you a little bit about the Karma. On paper, the Karma was a really great idea for a drone because you had a quadcopter configuration, which was familiar to a lot of folks at that point, even in the industry. And what was really cool about it is it had a gimbal assembly, a three axis gimbal on the front of the drone, but there was no camera camera integrated into the UAV system. The idea being, instead of having to spend thousands of dollars upgrading a drone every time you wanted to upgrade your aerial camera technology, you could just purchase a new GoPro and attach it to the gimbal assembly. So you're spending just a few hundred dollars as opposed to thousands of dollars to upgrade your aerial imaging equipment. Great idea and very consumer and prosumer friendly, if I might add. The problem with the Karma was, well, I guess I should say problems with the Karma was, it just wasn't reliable. There were a lot of issues with the firmware, with the GPS. It just, it was not a reliable drone. A lot of flyaways, if I remember correctly. And sometimes the drone couldn't even get airborne. It would just get bricked for no reason at all, usually having to do with firmware updates. And after all of those issues and a lot of the troubleshooting they had to go through, GoPro eventually just discontinued the product and left the drone space entirely. Now, it wasn't just because of the inefficiencies. It was the inefficiencies paired with the fact that DJI and Autel had sort of mastered the small UAV format at that point. So they were putting out solutions that were very reliable and didn't require a lot of troubleshooting right out of gate. So GoPro sort of had to slide out of the picture to stay alive and not waste any more money on R&D and troubleshooting in the drone division. At this point, you may be asking, well, Chris, if things went that bad for GoPro with the Karma, why would they come back to the drone industry? Here are a few reasons why. 
First of all, GoPro has experience developing and manufacturing UAV platforms because of the Karma. Even though it didn't pan out quite the way they wanted it to, they at least know what needs to happen in order to scale out the development and manufacturing of a small format drone. Second of all, they have a fantastic reputation and track record for action camera technology. GoPros are arguably some of the best action cameras on the market. So already having the capabilities of producing high quality, small format action camera technology will only help when it comes to going back to the drawing board with UAV tech. And finally, and maybe most importantly, GoPro has already proven that they're able to manufacture products that strike the balance between affordability and availability. I know efficacy is suspect only because the Karma was outshined by DJI leaps and bounds, but the fact remains, price points and availability are going to be super important in this conversation when it comes to providing consumer and prosumer drone technology, and GoPro has already done that with the Karma. When the Karma first came out, the drone by itself with no action camera was $800. If you wanted to purchase a bundle that included an action camera, it was only $1,100, which means that it's right in that price range that DJI prosumer and consumer users are used to paying for drone technology. We know GoPro can do it, it's just a matter if they want to. Number two on our list is Tesla. Now look, this is a little bit of a long shot. I'm not gonna pretend like this is a very high likelihood. And quite frankly, when I hear people talking about what's next for the drone industry after DJI would be banned, the idea of Tesla coming up in that conversation, and it happens a lot, just sort of leaves me feeling cringe. I hate to use that Gen Z term, but that's the way that I feel when I hear people say it. But even though I feel a little bit cringy in that moment when I hear Tesla come into that conversation, I won't deny that it's an interesting idea. The question is, though, before I get into the reasons why I think Tesla is poised to step into the role that DJI once filled in the American drone market, would they be interested in bothering with the consumer and prosumer industry, or would they be more interested in going for the big ticket items in the consumer and enterprise drone industry? Time will tell, but like I said, here are my reasons why I think Tesla is poised to step into DJI's role and provide consumer and prosumer drones for the American drone market. First of all, Tesla is arguably the leading technology technology firm in the United States with vast capabilities in research and development and manufacturing. This would make it relatively easy for Tesla to create a drone division and then get into the research and development phase before moving on to manufacturing and finally distribution. Second of all, they're incredibly fast paced when scaling their company and its products. This is perfectly suited for an industry that will need answers fast because we're going to have a huge segment of drone pilots in the United States that are without a viable UAV platform for their small businesses and organizations. Next, Tesla has already developed state-of-the-art autonomic systems for their road vehicles that will not only work in drones, but be in high demand due to the potential use cases for that autonomic system. And finally, Tesla branding is just super sexy. Their cars are sexy, as long as you ignore the Cybertruck, and I think that they could produce a drone that looks sleek and professional at an affordable price point for the consumer and prosumer drone market. Again, I think it's a long shot that Tesla throws their hat into the drone ring at all, but I think it's an especially long shot that they throw it into the consumer and prosumer side of the industry. But time will tell. Elon, Elon, can you hear me? Moving on to number three, we have Apple. Now, Apple has been gearing its technology towards creatives since around 1998. Now, I acknowledge that Apple has been doing business a lot longer than that, but around 1998 is when they really started to shift their focus from general computer usage to more of the creative side of things. I'm talking about the multimedia creators that we have in the world. Think photographers, videographers, graphic designers, and the sort. Now consider that those same creative professionals are potentially missing a very valuable tool in their tool belt, their aerial imaging equipment. Apple has the opportunity to step in and provide those creatives the technology that they need so that they don't have any disruption to their workflow or their abilities to do their jobs. Here's why I believe Apple is the second most likely company on this list to step into the consumer and prosumer drone market. First of all, DJI CEO is a known Apple fanboy and he's created his products to mirror the elegance and sleekness of Apple's products. So from that regard, I think Apple already sort of has some great foundational starting points for hardware that they could develop into a UAV platform. On that same note, DJI has recommended Apple systems as the preferred OS and hardware for running their applications while flying your drone. So think about iPads, iPhones, and the sort. 
Apple already has some of the foundational points for setting up an app that would mimic, if not completely mirror, the DJI ecosystem. Second of all, Apple has over a decade of experience developing small format camera systems on its cell phones. Think about all of the changes we've seen in the iPhones, iPads, and other Apple technology that includes a camera system over the last 10 years. First of all, we've seen larger camera sensors with every iteration of the Apple iPhone. Next, multiple lenses for a variety of focal lengths, giving creatives a lot of flexibility when they shoot. They also have included true slow motion video with those higher frame rates, and more recently, they've integrated raw photographs and Apple ProRes log video on their iPhone systems, which is fantastic for creatives because it gives them a lot of flexibility for professional application from Apple camera systems. And finally, and maybe the most convincing piece of information that shows Apple is poised to step into to the void that DJI would leave if they're banned from the American drone market, Apple already filed an unmanned aerial vehicle communication patent in 2020. Don't believe me? Look up US patent number 11929802C2 and see for yourself. The fact that Apple has a patent for a drone build means they've already shown serious interest in developing a drone. It may only be a matter of time before we see an iDrone. Get it? <laughs> like an iPhone. Ah, never mind. And the fourth and final company that I think is poised to step in and provide consumer and prosumer drone solutions in a DJI-less America is Sony. For a while now on this channel and other platforms where I've been able to express my opinions on the drone industry, I've said that DJI is going to slow down their manufacturing of small drones and they're going to enter into other technology markets. I've always maintained that DJI will eventually work to become a Sony-like company. Now, how ironic would it be if Sony sort of turns the tables and becomes a DJI-like drone company? Now, I know that Sony already has a drone out there, the AirPeak S1, but they don't have a platform that caters to the true consumer and prosumer audience. But I think Sony is the most likely company on this list to step up and fill the void that DJI would leave behind if they are banned from the American drone market. Here's why. First of all, Sony already has experience developing drone technology with the AirPeak S1. While it is not a perfect drone by any stretch of the imagination, it certainly does stand out as a drone that has performed better than other non-DJI and Autel drones. The AirPeak S1 does not fit the budget of most consumer prosumer users, but it is significantly less expensive than many other drones in its category. This being the case, it may be easier for Sony to scale manufacturing and technology to a point they can provide pricing more similar to DJI and Autel's consumer and prosumer drones. Next, Sony has not upset the drone industry users in the same way other drone manufacturers have, meaning they go into this potential situation with a clean slate and no reason for skepticism from the target audience. This will only help them as they release smaller format drones to maintain momentum and increase that momentum and produce higher level technology in those smaller platforms. And finally, think about how powerful Sony cameras are and now imagine that same technology on a small format consumer and prosumer drone. In theory, Sony can one-up the Mavic 3 by producing a UAV that is as convenient to use and fly with similar flight specs and including the same camera technology found in the Sony A6700. An APS-C size sensor with capabilities of shooting in 4K at 120 frames per second and 26 megapixel photos. On top of that, add S-Log, and now you have an actual Mavic killer. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice to me. And there you have it. Those are my top four choices for technology firms that are poised to fill the void that DJI would leave in the event that they are banned from the American market. What did you think of my picks? Do you have any other companies that you think could fill that role in case DJI drones are banned from the American market? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up icon down below as well. It will help this video get out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. And if you love drone content shot by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon too. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rocking, polo, we the fight.